If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. We know from Gauss's law that for a sheet of charge, the electric field can be calculated as follows. We have the electric field equaling sigma, which is the surface charge density divided by two epsilon, where epsilon is a constant. There is a derivation in the textbook for a situation in which we have two so-called conducting plates. And in that derivation, they give a different formula for the electric field. But in this particular question, I think that we're not using two conducting plates. And so we shouldn't even consider that derivation or the formula that follows it. So in essence, we can consider these two thin metal plates to be non-conducting sheets of charges. And as long as we make that assumption that they're non-conducting sheets of charges, then we're going to stick with using this formula, which also was derived from Gauss's law earlier in the chapter. Now, to part A, we need to calculate the electric field to the left of the plates. So perhaps we can envision a point out here. Now we recall that electric fields point towards negative charge. So we would have an electric field pointing to the right towards the negative plate. And they also point away from positive charges. So we would have electric field vectors pointing in this direction, away from the positive charge. So when we sum together the individual electric fields, we have to make sure when using our unit vector notation that we assign a negative sign for the electric field produced by the right plate because again that's pointing away from that positive plate or to the left in this drawing and then we can use a positive unit vector for the electric field pointing towards the negative plate. Now of course when we add these together we're going to get zero so the electric field on the left side of the plate is zero newtons per coulomb. Now in part B we're going to have essentially the same situation. If we choose a point that's on the right side of the plate, we would have electric field lines pointing away from the positive plate, so to the right, but then we would also have electric field lines pointing towards the negative plate, or to the left. So now when we sum the electric fields, the electric field from the right plate is pointing to the right, so it receives the positive sign in the unit vector notation. The electric field from the left plate is pointing to the left, and so it receives a negative sign in the unit vector notation. But again, when we add them, we're going to get zero newtons per coulomb. So this is the correct answer to part B. And finally, in part C, between the plates, the electric field will point towards the negative plate. It will also point away from the positive plate. So in this case, they're both pointing to the left. And so when we add the two electric field components together, we're going to use a negative sign on each unit vector. And of course, when we add these together, we would obtain the following result. And so we can now just plug in the known values. And when you compute this, you should obtain approximately negative 7.91 times 10 to the minus 11th newtons per coulomb. And then that would be in the I hat notation since the electric field is pointing in the x direction. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon. Also subscribe to the channel. You're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.